Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sierra and I'm a certified health coach with a background in psychology. In this video, I'm gonna take you guys through what I normally eat in a day for weight loss. For those of you who've watched my previous videos, you'd know that I've lost over 40 pounds and I've maintained that weight loss within maybe like five pounds or so for multiple years now. I'm currently in a little bit of a deficit. I definitely allow myself to eat a little bit more over the holidays, so my current goal at the moment is to lean out just a little bit. So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to show you guys how I eat in a day for weight loss. So the types of foods I eat, the times I eat those foods, etc. If you want a more detailed explanation of why I choose to eat the way I do, definitely check out my last video. It goes over 10 tips that helped me lose weight. And in that video I talk about caloric density, protein intake, meal timing, all of that stuff. I do plan on making a video about intermittent fasting and exactly why I choose to eat in the pattern I do, so stay tuned for that. In this video, I just want to focus on the food and give you guys an idea of what I choose to eat and when I choose to eat, mainly for meal inspiration. So today for breakfast, I'm gonna be making oatmeal. I don't know about you, unless I add like a lot of fruit or something to bulk up oatmeal, it doesn't fill me up for that long. I recently discovered a new oatmeal trick. I'm gonna get that ingredient right now. If I can reach. Okay, the secret, the secret ingredient, shiitake rice. I think that's what it's called, shiitake. Shirataki with oat fiber rice. A lot of you probably know about the noodles. I use those a lot too. A lot of good recipes you can make with those, but this entire package is 60 calories. Comes in two packages, 30 calories each. That's like absolutely nothing. Before you like freak out, because it's in like a preservative that has a really nasty smell and taste, the key is just rinsing this very thoroughly. And if you rinse it, it essentially has no taste. And when you add it to oatmeal, you basically can't even tell it's in there because it's like so soft. It just like blends so seamlessly with the oatmeal. And yeah, it just, volumizes your oatmeal like so much. It's definitely a little bit of a texture difference, but I like the texture. It's kind of like steel cut oats, huh? kind of like steel cut oats. You know, they have like the full grains and like they're like almost little pearls. So this is like the best trick ever. And another key to making really good oatmeal, I prioritize protein at every meal. So adding a scoop of protein powder is super key, but the type of protein powder you use makes a big difference. I found that in oatmeal, whey protein just like does not work. It just, it's just not good. To me, I'm not a big fan of the consistency. So I really like vegan proteins. I'm not dairy free, but there was a long period where I was dairy free. So I use vegan proteins a lot. I tried so many different vegan proteins. I find that adding vegan protein is really, really good in oatmeal because vegan protein is super absorbent. And in oatmeal, I like super thick oatmeal and vegan protein just like thickens it right up. A few protein powders that I like, I will show you. This is a Canadian brand and I don't really like it on its own, but in baked goods, it's really, really good. And maybe I have a bias because I really like stevia and this is stevia sweetened. So I really like this. I'll be using this one today. Other proteins that I also really like for vegan. So this is a brand and I'm not sponsored or anything, obviously. It's called Bomar Nutrition. Their vegan protein is really good, specifically the cinnamon cereal one and also their blueberry muffin one. Those are harder to get for me in Canada, but I still pay the extra cost in shipping and duties because it's so good. The Alani new vegan ones, the new ones, they're decent as well. Those are more accessible, easier to find. So yeah, we're gonna get into making my breakfast oatmeal. Shirataki rice, which sounds nasty, but definitely don't knock it till you try it, and vegan protein. And then I also add some of these flavor syrups, salted caramel, vanilla. Like I said, one of the most important things is eating foods that you really like. So adding things like sweeteners and flavorings, just why wouldn't you? Like there's really no con, honestly, and anyone that says otherwise, the evidence just doesn't suggest that, that there's any problem with artificial sweeteners. If you can add it and it makes your meals so much more enjoyable for no calories, why wouldn't you? You know? Yeah, let's get into it.
here we are. Am I gonna eat it out of the pot? Yes, I am. Because why waste the bowl? Just got back from the gym and grocery shopping and I'm going to make lunch. So today what I'm gonna make for lunch, it's going to be basically like a high protein guacamole, onion based dip, spread, I don't know what to call it, but I'm gonna spread that on rice cakes and then I'm gonna chop up some cucumbers, put it on top, add some garlic salt, chef's kiss. I love rice cakes because they're super light, really easy to digest. A lot of people don't like rice cakes because they're like, oh, they're, they have no fiber, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, what if the rest of your meal has fiber? What if you add fiber to rice cakes? If you're just eating rice cakes by themselves, yeah, it's not gonna be very filling or healthy. But if it's just like a source of carbs and it's part of a well-balanced meal, there's absolutely nothing wrong with rice cakes. So let's get into making that. Okay, all done. You could like prepare them fully before you eat them and before you sit down, but I actually like preparing them as I go. It's fun, takes longer to eat. I have my rice cake, like a whole stack. I'm not gonna eat the whole stack, I don't think. Sometimes I do, depending on how many carbs I have to play with. So yeah, I am going to enjoy. <laughs> Hello, we are back again in the same spot. <laughs> so it's like 8 p.m. This is when I like to have my dinner, usually like four hours before I go to bed. Gives me a little bit of time to digest. And I definitely prefer my dinner to be my largest meal. I also like to have dessert, so I always include a dessert with my dinner. So I'm gonna be making soup. Soup is like a super good meal option to have if your goal is weight loss. It's super high in water content, obviously, and you can add as many vegetables as you want to like fill yourself up. And it's also a super easy way to incorporate protein into a meal. Normally what I do, I just make like a vegetable soup and add like chicken as a protein source or shrimp, something like that. And what I also really like adding is noodles. So you saw this morning I had the shirataki rice. Shirataki noodles are also awesome. The only issue I have with shirataki noodles, especially if you're adding it to a soup that already has a lot of vegetables and a lot of fiber. It's just like a lot, not very easy to digest. Um, so recently I've been experimenting with easier to digest options just so I'm not super bloated after eating. So my favorite recently is zucchini and I make Zucchini noodles or zoodles. I bought a little veggie spiralizer. I'll get it. Yeah, so it's literally like a tiny little spiralizer. All you do, put the zucchini in it and twist and it makes zoodles. So yeah, we're gonna make soup and don't be surprised by how much 
I eat. Usually when people see the size of my meals, they're like, oh my god, you're gonna eat all that? And I'm like, yeah, I am gonna eat all that. It's 300 calories, 350 calories. When you eat high volume foods, you can eat a lot of food. And I am a very big eater. I have a very big appetite. I don't want to feel restricted in terms of how much I can eat, which is why I eat foods that are super low in calories. And it's all super healthy foods. So if anyone judges you for eating a lot, just tell them to F off. Yep, I'm going to make soup and this is a game changer. The game changing ingredient when it comes to my soup, <laughs> I mean, it's nothing really special, but canned mixed vegetables. You don't need to cook anything down. Putting this together takes like two seconds other than me spiralizing this, which also only takes like a couple minutes. If you watch more of my videos, you'll probably see that I'm a very lazy cook. So many people complain that healthy food is really time consuming to make. Literally everything I make takes like five minutes to cook because I just buy things like this that are prepared, pre-prepared. Like this, I just dump everything into the pot, heat it up, and it's good, like everything's already cooked. I don't need to cook anything. If you buy things that are already cooked, you don't need to cook anything. I never cook protein sources because, I don't know, it just takes too long. I just buy them already cooked. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Get a good tasting broth, get some canned vegetables, throw them in there, noodles of some sort if you want. Get a protein, I use usually just like pre-made shredded chicken. Add in some seasonings and you can have a really amazing tasting meal that's super satiating and filling. It's like just the perfect comfort food. Don't make things harder than they need to be. It's the moral of the story. Cook smarter, not harder. So without further ado, I'm going to cook my dinner. Just a small, just a small bowl of soup, you know? But yeah, look. Zoodles, so good, yum. Mm. Cute. This is my dinner. Oh, I need garlic salt. Garlic salt is key. Don't be shy. <laughs> this whole bowl, this whole pot of soup is like 350 calories. Let's see. Yeah, around 350 calories. 350 calories for a whole bowl of soup. And it's gonna really fill you up. Gives you all the micronutrients you need. Gives you a nice source of protein. Yeah, it's like the perfect dinner for me. I'm gonna eat this and then get back to you when I have dessert. Okay, so we are back. I'm hot now because I had soup. I had my soup, was bomb as always. And I always like to finish my day with something sweet. What I've been having recently is popsicles. I've recently been making these like protein popsicles. It's nice because I just had a warm soup, so I'm really hot. So if I have popsicles, <laughs> they'll cool me down. And then I'm kind of cold and then I go in the shower because I need a shower before bed, yeah. I don't, I don't know what that's about. Yeah, what I've been making recently is popsicles, so... So I basically just have these silicone popsicle liners that I got from Amazon. And basically what I do is I make like a protein smoothie with frozen fruit, protein powder, cashew milk, some flavorings, blend it up, pour it into these molds, and make popsicles. These ones have 
like little chunks of strawberries in them. Look how good they look. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The best part though, can you guess how many calories? 20 calories in one popsicle. 20. If you use the right ratios of ingredients, I use a whey protein for this. Whey reacts with fruit. The protein shake expands a little bit, so that's why you get a lot more volume. So each popsicle is only 20 calories. And so I'm literally gonna have all of these, two of them. Yep. <laughs> it's basically just like having a protein shake, but you just feel like you're eating way more and it's super enjoyable. And so yeah. I'm gonna eat these when I'm watching my show, and that's gonna be it for my day of eating. Ah. Definitely stay tuned for future videos because I am gonna make a lot more what I eat in the days, as well as give you guys different recipes, meal ideas, etc. Definitely make sure to thumbs up this video if you liked it, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. See you guys soon. Mm -hmm.